Cigarette and cigar smoking is a fiery subject in Florida, with a law kicking in last year to ban smoking in public workplaces. But cigars also make up a colorful part of Florida history, especially in Tampa. You may have heard of Cuban cigar rollers working inside factories in Ybor City. What you may not know is that these laborers did not toil alone. Someone else worked alongside them, and his job had nothing to do with cigars. New Florida Steve Matorin takes us back. We are in the VM Ebor Cigar Factory, and this portion of the factory was what was known as La Galera. La Galera is where the cigar makers actually rolled the cigars, and this is where the lector read to the cigar makers. These readers, lectors as they were known, were not employed by the factories. Rather, they were selected and paid by the workers themselves. Earning 25 cents a worker per week, their take was often five times what the cigar rollers typically made. This is a very typical lector stand where he stood and addressed the entire galera in the morning, he would read newspapers, translated into Spanish, of course. In the afternoon, he typically would read a novel, some other piece of fiction, some poetry. This is uh, uh, Don Quixote, uh, and this, would have been, uh, this is a book that a lector used, and this would have been a favorite. The power that they had to have, the energy that they had, the talent they had, when they're reading a novel, it's like radio readings. The things that those guys did, the lectores became the educators. They, they were the teachers of the Latin community. Even after the day's work was done, as a lector, you had a certain position in the community. So some of the lectors would gather at different coffee shops and they would sit around the table uh, and have coffee and talk. People would gather around to hear what they had to say. People depended on them to find out what was going on in the world. But by the early 1930s, the cigar factory owners grew weary of the lectors and their pro-labor readings. The ones that are putting those ideas in their mind are these lectores who are reading this material that's agitating them. Let's get rid of the lectores and we get rid of this problem. They also got rid of the education system that the cigar factories had enjoyed in Tampa since 1886-1887. When they brought about all that change, the irony of the whole thing was they brought about change, all right, no more electors. In a strange way, they won and they lost. They lost their job, but they won their point. While no one knows for sure how many electors worked in Tampa, these men held positions of great respect in the community. One of the prominent electors in the cigar factories before they were banished was Victoriano Mantega. And legend has it that he came to Tampa from Cuba with a white suit and two dollars in his pocket. According to his grandson Patrick, it was actually ten dollars and two white suits. Patrick publishes the only trilingual newspaper in America, La Gaceta, the weekly newspaper started by Victoriano in 1922. Going to a newspaper was a very natural uh, transition. Um, you know, you were informing, you were entertaining, um, and the newspaper continued to do that same role. Mr. Mantega was, uh, without a question, a very educated and a very dignified man. He was at the head of just about every liberal cause in Ybor City. My grandfather spoke at many a funeral. He spoke at, you know, he was invited to many a birthday, to many a christening. You know, they did take on a role that was greater than just a guy you worked with. It was uh, uh, somebody who, you know, was well known in the community. It was a, uh, somewhat of a, being a, a pop star in your, your local community. That was like having Elvis Presley stay with you. In the 1940s, Victoriano Mantega was a house guest of Dr. Pacheco inspiring Ferdy to later paint and write about the lectors, including a 600-page novel printed in La Gaceta. The thought that one man could so mesmerize a, a large audience, influence them, 
teach them what to think, teach them how to think. I mean, I, I was in awe of that guy. I mean, I thought, wow, what, what a guy. I'd like to grow up to be like that. When I learned at the hands of this wonderful man, this, uh, this weaver of tales, was how to spin a yarn. In tribute to the lector tradition, Principal Manuel Duran of Tampa's DeSoto Elementary built a replica lector stand in the school library and established the Read to Me program. It's the symbolism of being read to and how important it is. And reading and literacy is so important to these kids. And just as the cigar workers had before, these students choose their own material. Una para las niñas ahora. Sleeping Beauty. Reading became one of my goals in life. And it has to be the goals of these kids, because if you can read, you can do anything. The Tampa Public Library echoes these thoughts with its annual One Community, One Book program. This year's selection is Anna in the Tropics, Nilo Cruz's Pulitzer Prize winning play about a lector from Ybor City. We wanted to pick either a Florida-based book or something by a Florida author. And when this sort of fell into our laps, this idea that this play had been written about Ybor City, we thought, this is perfect. Anna in the Tropics even made it to Broadway this season. With Jimmy Smith's portraying a lector, the play is based on actual lector readings from Tolstoy's Anna Karenina, which was a favorite among the workers. We really want people to understand there's more to the reading experience than just that quiet moment you spend alone with the book. The act of reading aloud is just such an enriching experience, and that's what the lectors did. You can learn more about the history and tradition of lectors in Ybor City. Log on to the New Florida website at newflorida.org.